So, we've looked at momentum as it applies to a single object so far. Now, we're going to consider the momentum of a system of two or more objects. To do this, we're going to explore uh, what happens with momentum during collisions and explosions. So, we're going to be looking at momentum and, and what's called conservation of momentum in one-dimensional elastic and inelastic collisions and two-dimensional completely inelastic collisions. And we're going to learn what those types of collisions are, as well as uh, explosions. And that's uh, simply just two objects being forced apart from one another. So let's start by considering the momentum of the two billiard balls shown here. In the picture, the stationary billiard ball, ball B, is set into motion by a collision with a moving billiard ball, ball A. We have to assume that both balls are on a smooth table, both are of the same mass, and that neither ball rotates before or after the collision. So, before the collision, the momentum of ball B is equal to zero because it's not moving, while ball A has a momentum of 0.72 kilogram meters per second. During the collision, ball B gains momentum while ball A loses momentum. After the collision, ball A has a momentum of 0 0.018 kilogram meters per second, while ball B has a momentum of 0 0.702 kilogram meters per second. So this shows us that the momentum that ball B, but that ball A loses, which is 0 0.702 kilogram meters per second is exactly equal to the momentum that ball B gains. Now, when we take this momentum as a whole system, that is, we take both balls together, we see that the total momentum before the collision is 0 0.72. And the total momentum after the collision, so the combined momentum of each ball, is the same after the collision, the 0 0.018 plus the 0 0.702 is equal to the 0.72 kilogram meters per second. The momentum of each ball changes individually, but overall, the total momentum of the two balls together remains the same. So we say that the momentum is conserved, and this leads us to introduce the law of conservation of momentum. Now, this law of conservation of momentum simply states that the total momentum of all objects interacting with one another in a system remains constant. The interactions that we're going to use to learn about the law of conservation of momentum are called collisions and explosions. So simply stated that the momentum of a system prior to some interaction between two or more objects is equal to the momentum of that entire system after that interaction. Now collisions between objects occur all of the time. The law of conservation of momentum tells us that the momentum of the entire system of objects before a collision will be equal to the momentum of the entire system of objects after the collision. Now there's two types of collisions we're going to look at, elastic and inelastic. Let's look first at elastic collisions. In an elastic collision, it, this is one in which the two objects will collide and bounce apart. Now they might bounce apart along a one-dimensional line or they may bounce apart in a two-dimensional manner. For example, when playing pool, if two pool balls collide, they may bounce apart in different directions or they may bounce apart so they go back in the same direction from which they came. In either case, the total momentum before and after that collision is conserved which just means that the magnitude of the momentum before the collision is equal to the magnitude of the uh, momentum after the collision. Now, when it comes to problem solving, we're going to deal with only one-dimensional elastic collisions. But with conceptual questions, you might see questions involving two-dimensional elastic collisions. But as far as problem solving goes, the most common types of elastic collisions that we will see, I call the collide and stop type and the collide and bounce apart type. With the collide and stop type, that involves one object starting at rest while the other object moves toward it. 
and when they collide, the first object stops while the other moves away, much like the billiard balls in our initial example. Now, in this collide and stop type of problem situation, because the momentum of, is conserved, if the two objects have the same mass, the second object is going to move away with the same velocity as the first object. If the second object, though, has greater mass, it's going to move away with less velocity. And if it has a smaller mass, it's going to move away with a greater velocity. Now with the collide and bounce apart type of elastic collision, these occur where both objects usually are moving toward one another and, and then collide and move away from one another. Now, if they have the same mass and same initial velocity, they're going to bounce away from each other with the same velocity they started with, just in opposite directions. So if they have the same mass but different initial velocities, their velocity will trade places. So if this one is moving in faster than this one, then they switch and they, their velocities will trade places. The slower one will move away with the faster one's initial velocity and vice versa. However, if their masses are different, they will not trade velocities. So when it comes to problem solving, we have to pay attention to the direction of the velocities and assign appropriate positive and negative directions. Okay, so that's the elastic collisions. Okay, when it comes to inelastic collisions, then these are collisions where in which one of the when the objects collide they stick together a collision in which the two objects stick together and then move with a common final velocity is called a perfectly inelastic collision okay so if i were to drop a ball of clay onto the floor and it sticks so it doesn't bounce or if uh, two train cars couple together that's an inelastic collision, a perfectly inelastic collision. The most common type of perfectly inelastic collision dealt with in problem solving is, is one where one object begins at rest and a second object comes in and collides and the two move off to, in, uh, in, in one direction and with the same velocity. Now in such a collision the initial velocity of that moving object is always greater than the final velocity of the combined objects, which makes sense, right? In order for momentum to be conserved, when the two masses become one mass, the velocity has to drop in order to compensate for that increased mass. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at three examples. We're gonna look at uh, an explosion, which takes place, explosions take place when objects are, are initially together and then they're forced apart by some sort of force between them. And in those cases, in explosions then, if the, um, if the two masses are the same mass, they're going to move away from each other at the same velocity. If one mass is greater than the other, say the green mass is greater than the red mass, then uh, the, the red mass is going to move away with a higher velocity than the green one will. So we're going to look at um, an explosion. We're going to look at a perfectly inelastic collision involving train cars. And we're going to look at an elastic collision involving uh, billiard balls. So our first example is one of an explosion. Here we've got two ice skaters, Sandra and David. Maybe it's Sandra and David. I don't know. Sandra and David. They're standing facing each other on frictionless ice. Sandra, Sandra, has a mass of 45 kilograms. David, a mass of 80 kilograms. Then they push off each other. After the push, Sandra moves off at a speed of 2.2 meters per second. Well, David, we don't know. We want to figure out what David's speed is. So the first thing to think about on this, right, we're told that Sandra moves off at 2.2 meters per second, which is a positive velocity. So we're going to assign Sandra as person two. David moves off at some other velocity we want to know. He moves off then to the left, okay? What we should expect then in our answer is that to find David's speed, we should expect a negative answer because our picture shows us David moving off to the left, the negative direction. 
So conservation of momentum is going to tell me that my final momentum is going to be equal to my initial momentum. And since my initial momentum, they're both initially at rest, my initial momentum is zero. So my final momentum will be zero. So we have to look at each, the momentum of each individual uh, part of the system in order to, to solve this. So we first have to take, say, the mass of Sandra times the velocity of Sandra plus the mass of David times the velocity of David. And that's going to equal zero. And of course, each of these conditions is the final condition, so we add in a final in our uh, problem as well. Now, Sandra, with her mass of 45 kilograms, moves off to the right with a velocity of 2.2. And David, with his mass of 80 kilograms, move off, moves off to the left. Now, what we're going to expect is because David has such a greater mass than Sandra, that he's, his uh, final velocity, the magnitude of his final velocity, should be smaller than 2.2. Which, when we do the math, it, it does end up being smaller than that 2.2, the magnitude of it, and negative 1.24 meters per second. Okay, so in this example, we start with two railroad cars. One of them starts at rest and therefore has zero momentum. The other one is moving at 2.5 meters per second, uh, and therefore it has a momentum. This one moves, it collides with the, the stationary one, and then the two of them move forward uh, with some common velocity. So when we go to solve this, we recognize that momentum is conserved, as it is in any collision, and that the two objects come together and move with a common velocity, so they become a single mass. So that when we go to uh, plug in our values, we end up with a velocity here of 1.36 meters per second and it's a positive velocity so we know that that the two trains go off to the right. Okay so this example is one of an elastic collision where we have two billiard balls hit head-on. Uh, we want to know the final velocity of the second ball if the first one's final velocity is a negative 1.5 meters per second. So that negative means that the first one bounces back off to the left while the, the uh, second one bounces back to the right. We're going to expect a positive velocity for that second ball. And the masses of each ball are listed in the diagram. So we know that uh, momentum is conserved in this case. So we have the momentum of the first ball plus the momentum of the second ball in the initial state prior to the collision. Then the collision happens, and then we end up with a final, final momentum of the first ball and a final momentum of the second ball. So then when we go to plug in our values, we see here the momentum of the first ball moving off to the right, so it has a positive velocity. The momentum of the second ball moving to the left, so we put in a negative value for the initial velocity of that second ball. And then we've got the uh, final momentum of the first ball, and we're looking for the final velocity of the second ball, which we'll get from its momentum. Okay, so with our initial momentum over here, when we go to work out our uh, problem, we end up with a final velocity of 1.78 meters per second. For the second ball, and it's a positive uh, velocity, which is it fits in with what we expected to find. Okay, so those are the three types of collisions that we'll look at, uh, the two collisions in the explosion, and we'll look at more examples in class. See you then.